And welcome to In Retrospection, where we review the retro today. I am Joshua Caleb. I'm Gray Mellis. And I'm Tom Hall. And this being our 42nd episode, we had no other choice but to play Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Because, I mean, it would be a crime to do anything else. Hmm. Fresh from 1984. <laughs> mm. I have recovered nicely from uh, apparently what was pink fever. Yes, I was going to ask you how, how was, you were feeling. You know, it was a harrowing experience and, you know, a lot of doctors, but all good now. Back on my feet. I had to give you some blue and red shots and some black yeah. just to combat all that pink. Yeah, they started with yellow and blue, but it just made green. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that wouldn't turn out very well. <laughs> yeah, when you pee green, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Too many energy drinks. <laughs> uh, okay, it's now, got electrolytes. <laughs> now, this is going to be interesting because I have never read any of the Hitchhiker books. I haven't even seen the movie. Yeah, me neither. So I like no Well, the nothing. movie's not going to help you too much with this one. <laughs> And this is a text-based game, we, which we, I we try not to talk about the movie. Oh, so that's one of those things where we just sort of all agree <laughs> that it didn't happen. Yeah, it. That was just. I. That was a. You know, he woke up. The movie woke up in the shower the next morning. And <laughs> it was just a dream. Uh, <laughs> only we could do that in real life. Okay, oh so we are waking up in a room that is spinning very gently. Okay, that's a new one. Or at least it would be if you could see it, which you can't. It is pitch black. Classic line there. Someone had a nice night out. Yes, yeah, so... That's pretty much what your problem is. This is the first puzzle of the game. So what do we do? Well, we turn on the light. Turn huh. on light. good start to the day <laughs> pity it's going to be the worst one of your life oh. the light is now on well there's that bedroom in the bed the bedroom is a mess it is a small bedroom with a faded carpet and old wallpaper there is a wash basin a chair with a tatty dressing gown slung over it and a window with curtains drawn near the exit leading south is a phone there is a flathead screwdriver here, outside the bed. There is a toothbrush here, outside the bed. Okay, the first clue is what? Uh, there is a dressing gown. Everything is outside the bed. Ah, uh, yes, I was going to say, <laughs> they seem to be clarifying that these the items are not in the bed. first thing is to understand that Douglas Adams, the author of the book and this game to some degree, everything's going to be very specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so just just try this. Get all. Try try get all. Right, because that is a command. Telephone. You can't reach <laughs> it from the bed. The effort almost kills you. <laughs> Flathead screwdriver. Gets the floor is lava. You can't reach it from the bed. The effort almost kills you. So apparently, trying to reach anything of worth from the bed kills you. Yeah, the get all command actually is a very useful command within this the parser, which oh, is I can the imagine. next processor here. Mm. So, so get out. you were on the right track of get out Our of bed. Character is the laziest man in the universe. <laughs> well, he's hung over because he stayed out too late last night. <laughs> very like every difficult piece of effort almost kills him. It. The room is still spinning. It dips and sways a little. Dance with room. <laughs> uh, no, uh, spin uh, opposite uh, direction. You want to get uh, your your gown on. So, put Wear on gown. gown. Put on gown. You're not holding your gown. Oh, excuse oh, seriously. me. Seriously, <laughs> I said it's very anal. You know, uh, space you quest. You have to get one before you go to step two. <laughs> uh, space quest all over again. Get gown. Luckily, this is large enough for you to get a hold. Get a hold yeah, of. basically, if you try to grab anything else, the screwdriver, the phone, or anything, you weren't going to get them. The gown oh. is the only thing you're going to get. Oh, so I'm so drunk, I can't even pick up a toothbrush or a you're screwdriver. You're severely hungover. Yep. <laughs> okay, you notice something in the pocket. Ooh, okay. Um, look in pocket. 
It's hard to open or close the pocket unless you're wearing the gown. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh. Wow. Okay. Oh. Put on gown. You are now wearing your gown. Thank you. Uh, look in pocket. Opening your gown. I thought opening your gown? I thought we were just looking in the pocket. There, examine. Reveals a thing your aunt gave you which you don't know what it is. A buffered analgesic analgesic headache medicine. Oh, and a pocket <laughs> fluff. Very what important. Is, what is a pocket fluff? Actually, all three items are very important. Two of them very much later. The only one important right now is you've get, got a splitting headache. Get all. Telephone. Oh, boy. Telephone, you lunge for it, but the room spins nauseatingly away. The floor gives you a light tap on the forehead. <laughs> the flathead screwdriver, you're certainly picking the tough tasks. The floor acts like a trampoline on an ice rink or it's like something they've been working on for years at Disneyland. The toothbrush slips through your fumbling fingers and hits the carpet with a nerve-shattering bang. That's a heavy toothbrush. It's a really bad headache. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, take anal... Buffered anal. <laughs> oh, do I have to say buffered? Yep. Oh, boy. Buffered anal... That's one thing is, you know, by the time you're finished playing, audio description. <laughs> yeah, your uh, window stopped updating. By the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good. That's not just me. Okay. No, <laughs> like, I'm just winging it myself. <laughs> oh, so I'm gonna have to do a dramatic <laughs> reading of all this. Yeah. Yes, you will have to do the dramatic reading. The yeah, floor. A lot of, yeah, a lot of you swallow the I'm tablet. Like I'm there. After a few seconds, the room begins to calm down and behave like in an order, orderly manner. Your terrible headache goes. That was a clumsy sentence. So now can I get all? Uh, yeah. He's, he's not known for his grammar, just, just his attention to detail. Telephone, you pick up the receiver. A moment later, the, dial the dialing tone is suddenly cut off. Glancing through the window, you can't help but notice the large old oak tree of which you are particularly fond crashing down through <laughs> the phone cable. This person did not know how to write. Flathead screwdriver taken toothbrush. As you pick up the toothbrush, a tree outside the window collapses. There is no... Oh, these are out of order. The description for the telephone should be after the description of grabbing the toothbrush because when you grab the toothbrush, the tree collapses. Because there is uh, yeah, yeah. there there is no casual relationship between these two events. Shouldn't you be taking more interest in the events in the world around you while you've got it? So we need to go outside. Go outside. You make your way down to the front porch front porch this is the enclosed front porch of your home your front garden okay. lies to the south and you can re-enter your home to the north and there's a pile of junk mail get the mail very important get the mail get the mail <laughs> the one thing about this game is that if you forget something you'll screw yourself at the end the game will basically continue on and you will not be able to continue on. It will tell you, well, maybe you should have had this, but, oh, by the way, that was like, you know, 20 steps back on the planet Earth and you're no longer there. Or the Earth no longer exists. So yeah. It's the pile of mail that you need. So, yeah. Um, you... I don't know how much time I spent on the Babel fish without the pile of mail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, As you can tell, I played some of the game. So <laughs> you, you get to get the, the end of the mail. <laughs> you, you get to the end of the game, and you needed this code that was mailed to you to save the universe. And it turns out that you didn't grab the pile of mail, which has now been annihilated because Earth has been blown up. So you That's effectively you can no longer save the world. Yeah. 
So this right game, after you finish cursing, this and that would be the humor. The, trust me, Douglas Adams would find that funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because you overlooked some detail, you just screwed yourself out of the whole game, and you have to restart it all over. <clears throat> yeah. So th- these games, you have to pay attention. There's no. There, there's usually if you can't pick it up, then you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Pick it up. Good old adventure you're games. Probably going to need it at one point. <laughs> so get everything. Okay, so what if we go to Garden? Yeah. Go. Right. So you can go south. You can say go to the Garden. Go you can... to Garden. I don't know the word Garden. You then right. go south. just used it. Or you can do S, or, or you can say go south. Fine. Go south. <clears throat> oh, she's updating again. Yep, I'm back here. You can enter your home to the north. A path leads around it to the northeast. And a country lane is visible to the south. I thought we were in the garden. All that (laughs) lies between your... A garden is a lawn, basically. Oh. A green space for a uh, British house. Oh. Your your home is the huge yellow bulldozer buried... All that lies between your home and the huge yellow bulldozer bearing down on it is a few yards of mud. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. He looks startled to see you emerge and yells at you to get out of the way. And the bulldozer rumbles slowly towards your home. Oh, so now he's going to wreck our home. Okay, now, this is an interesting thing because... You you do the wrong thing here, and the game ends pretty quickly. Ooh. <laughs> so, and it really relies on you to know the book, the show, whatever. So what are you going to do when a bulldozer is going to run over your house? You lie down in front of it. I was going to say get out of the way. <laughs> no, you lay down in front of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this Maybe game, that's what you're going to do. <laughs> this, this, this game absolutely makes you think outside the box <laughs> so lay, lay down. in or okay just lay down yeah lay down what do you want to lay oh lie down lie down excuse excuse my grammar <laughs> oh now he cares about grammar <laughs> <laughs> you lie down in the path of the advancing bulldozer the processor le- yells for you what yells at you to move? Well, okay, whatever. Yells so, at you to, for Chris' sake, move. So you wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is like Elder Scrolls. <laughs> wait 12 hours. <laughs> Time passes. The bulldozer thunders toward you. The ground is shaking beneath you as you lie in the mud. And you wait some more. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, wait some more. (laughs) I don't know what some more is. Time (laughs) passes. The noise of the giant bulldozer is now so violently loud that you can't even hear Prosser yelling yelling to warn you that you will be killed if you don't get the hell out of the way. You just see him gesticulating wildly. So you wait some more. <laughs> uh, Excellent. Even in 1984, there was trolling. <laughs> oh, with a terrible grinding of gears, the bulldozer comes to an abrupt halt just in front of you. It shakes, shudders, and emits noxious substances all over your rosebed. Prosser is incoherent with rage. Moments later, your friend Ford, who is Ford, Ford Perfect arrives. He hardly seems to notice your predicament, but keeps glancing nervously at the sky. Now, Ford Perfect is a type of a car, actually. And oh, so my friend's a car. Yeah, well, the guy named himself after the first thing he saw when he arrived on the planet. Because oh. he's not human. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a spoiler. Mm. If you haven't read the books, too bad. You're going to be spoiled about this anyways. <laughs> He says, hello, Arthur, takes a towel from his bather, battered leather satchel and offers it to you. Ooh, so, satchel. take towel? Yep. Oh, so what you happened? know we're getting it. 
What happens if I refuse never, towel? Never be without your towel. No. Well, what if I say refuse towel? That's <laughs> how the game just doesn't go on. <laughs> it's a pretty quick game. As you take it, Ford says, Er, look, thanks for lending me the towel. Been nice knowing you. Got to go now. He smiles oddly and walks down the country lane. Okay. Now, this is the part where it kind of differentiates from the book and the show. Because what they're trying to do here is the council is trying to tear down your house to make way for an uh, expressway. Ah. Right? And in the show and the book, you've kind of, they, Ford Perfect kind of convinces Prosser to lay down in your place. Uh huh. Uh, so you're not going to do that. You're just going to follow Ford Perfect. So we're supposed to follow him even though the guy still has a bulldozer in front of our house? Pretty much. Okay. Follow forward. Um, any other way? You can't do that way at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. I kind of want to punch this guy a little bit. Get up. <laughs> Uh, the bulldozer you're driving. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Forgot. You are supposed to convince him. So, uh, say, Ford, what about my home? Oh, except I already got up. So now the bulldozer has already, cl has already crushed my house. <laughs> oh, so I just died. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Restart. You were incredibly dead. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you came out of this. You're dead. <laughs> An ambulance arrives. Okay. Get in. Haunt Prosser. <laughs> You keep out of this, you're dead, and should be concentrated on developing a good firm rigor mortis. Rigor mortis. <laughs> you are put in the ambulance, which drives away. Um, yeah. Presser. Prosser. Prosser. You're a dead person. You are talking too much. <laughs> As the ambulance reaches the mortuary, a fleet of Vogan constructor ships unexpectedly arrives and demolishes the earth to make way for a new hyperspace bypass. You are about to, we are about to give you your score. Yeah, these peril-sensitive sunglasses were something that actually came with the box. They oh. were sort of like black cardboard <laughs> cut-out glasses that you couldn't see through. <laughs> <laughs> because obviously, if you can't see the peril, then... then... Yes. <laughs> 10 out of 400. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was only 19 possible points I could have at this moment. Uh, it's the number of turns. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. So, turn on light. Turn <laughs> on <it>? light. <laughs> um, get out of bed. Get gown. Get gown. Wear gown. Wear gown. Look in pocket. <laughs> Look in pocket. Take Played this once or twice, huh? Buffer. Uh, <laughs> now you will. We can, once we get out and lay down, we'll save the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a good idea. That might be a good idea. Okay, so uh, get, get off. All. Uh, go outside. Yeah, get mail. Get mail. Um, go south. Yeah. Lie down. Lie down. Man, it went much quicker this time. Save. <laughs> <laughs> so you just type save? Yeah. Save. So Is position it? zero. Slot one, I guess. Default six. No. Slot one, drive default. Press return. Okay, whatever. This is something particular to their Apple, I guess. 
Oh, failed because you don't have a blank floppy in. So we'll we'll have to do what we can with trying to get it completely right as we go along. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, I wonder. Uh, let me check something here. I might have the wrong disk in drive two. Save. Zero. Slot one. Drive two. Press return. Failed. I guess I don't have a spare drive. So... I beg you, oh, what am I supposed to say now? Wait. How do I get out of a save? Um, just type in wait and see what it does. Because you still might be oh. in the game. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Wait some more. Wait even longer. I don't you just have to type wait, by the way. <laughs> oh, I was trying to be creative. I know. Okay. He likes being Take descriptive. Towel. He's a writer. <laughs> yes. As, as a writer, it is my natural inclination to be creative. Indeed. Yeah. So basically, when Ford comes and you take the towel, the thing you want to ask him is, what about my house? So, say you what? say ask Ford or just type in the question. Yeah. What about my house? Well, what about it? Okay. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> what about my house? Ford, what about my house? The sense isn't one I recognize. Ask Ford. <clears throat> Ask Ford about house. A bot. Oh. Hey, a bot. Ask Ford about house. Did you take the towel? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. You can't see Ford here. Because he left, because he took the towel. He's supposed to refuse the towel. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> so I was right. <laughs> Yeah, you were right. <laughs> Restart. <laughs> Do over. Oh, oh yes. boy. No. Uh. <laughs> Turn on light. Turn Get out. On Turn on light. <laughs> Get out of bed. bed. Get down. Get down. Put on gown. Look in. Oops. I would have quit a long time ago when I used to play these types of games. Yeah. Basically, I would have punched Prosser, and that would have been the end of it, assuming I had gotten that far. <laughs> well, as you can see, this is not written for <laughs> someone with a low... Um, it's written for someone, obviously, with uh, uh, OCD. <laughs> not ADHD. <laughs> uh, no, if you have uh, uh, any attention span issues, don't play these games. No, the the only text based games I played were the ones I programmed, and those were always multiple choice, pick your own adventure kind of games. Yeah. No, I choose your own adventure books. I started with Zork. You know. The original Zork, yeah. and there's some places in Zork where you have to just, you can't, you have to think outside the box and break almost the fourth wall in order to f do it. So you lie down. Lie <laughs> down. And wait. And wait some more. And wait, wait. some more. And don't wait. take the towel. Because Fort wait. runs away. So, refuse towel? Nope, just don't say that. Just ask him about your house. Ask for about. I don't house. think that's going to work. We'll see. A long silence tells you that Ford Perfect isn't interested in talking about your home. <coughs> Ford glances uncomfortably at the sky. He offers you the towel again. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Try it again. Ask Ford about yeah. house. Oh, here we go. A long silence tells you that Ford perfectly isn't interested about talking to us. 
Ford seems oblivious to your trouble, so you ask Ford, what about my home? He looks startled, then guiltily, he starts to say something and stops. He starts to say something else and stops. Suddenly, he seems to see the bulldozer for the first time. Stops starting to say things and starts. He seems to come to a momentous decision, says he has something of earth-shattering importance to tell you, and stresses the importance of a, qu of a quick drink at the horse and groom. Yeah, pointing, the pub. <laughs> pointing toward Prosser, you exclaim, that man wants to knock my house... I just hit return. <laughs> Knock my house down. Ford goes off for a quiet word with Prosser. From where you're lying, you cannot hear what's happening, although they seem deeply engrossed in conversation. So just wait. Yeah. Wait. Time passes. Ford and Prosser stop talking and approach you. Ford says that Prosser has agreed to lie in front of lie in your place so that the two of you can go off to the pub. What kind of idiot is that guy? Yeah, really. <laughs> Wait for it, though. <laughs> Reluctantly, Prosser steps forward and lies down in front of the bulldozer. You stand up. It's not so much what of an idiot Prosser is, it's what kind of a guy Ford is for convincing the guy to lay down in front of I know. Of hey, you want to go lie in the mud so me and my friend can go to the pub? <laughs> oh. It has to be so. some kind of smooth talking. So I guess go with Ford. So basically, you follow Ford. Follow. What about my towel? Uh, you don't worry about it. that. You don't need it. He'll give it to you later. Oh, follow Ford. But Ford Perfect is right here. So but I'm south. not controlling Ford Perfect. So just go south. Go south. The road runs from your home to the north toward the village pub to the west. Ford enters so west. from the north. So you go west to the pub. Go west. The pub is pleasant and cheerful and full of pleasant and cheerful people who don't know they've got about 12 minutes to live and are therefore having a spot of lunch. Some music is playing in an old, on an old jukebox. The exit is east. There is a barman serving at the bar. Behind the bar is a shelf. Good to know. It is full of the sort of items you find on shelves behind bars in pubs. Like liquor, for example? <laughs> so what happens if I say get all? Hey, I don't know. <laughs> but get do, all. You, do you want to restart? <laughs> uh, a little. <laughs> Cheese sandwich. I figure we can get to the Babel fish here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese sandwich, the barman snaps hands off until you pay for it. Peanuts, the barman snaps hands off until you pay for it. Ford <laughs> That's buys what I lots of beer say. and offers. So, anyways, you want to drink some beer. Muscle relaxant. <laughs> drink beer. And then we get hung over again, then we will end up back in our house with a headache in a spinny <laughs> room. <laughs> you start the game over again. It's very good beer brewed by a small local company. You particularly like its flavor, which is why you woke up feeling so wretched this morning. So why are we drinking it again? I don't know. It didn't take very long. Well, you need it for the muscle relaxant. You'll, you'll, you'll find out later. Oh, you were at somebody's birthday party, party here in the pub last night. You begin to relax and enjoy yourself. So when Ford mentions that he's from a small planet in the vicinity of... Beetlejuice. Oh. <laughs> That's how it's spelled. <laughs> <laughs> Not from Guildford, as he usually claims. You take it in your stride and say, oh, yes, which part? So. Why am I asking the question and then having to do something? So, <laughs> anyways, uh, it, we're going to try to speed it up a bit here. And uh, you want to buy a sandwich. Buy sandwich. Yeah. There's no HF in the Sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Barman you gives you a cheese sandwich. Blah, blah, blah. Examine the sandwich. I think it was amazing, the description, I think, of the sandwich, if I remember correctly. There it is there. 
drink the beer or just for it. It will help you. It will help okay, the unidentified system. chemical reaction to produce something that it shouldn't be because of the margin and the pickle. <laughs> So, exam- so you want to drink it? It, it? it already gave us the thing, but you can say it again if you want. So I'm yeah. not supposed to examine the sandwich? No, just drink a beer. Drink beer. It's really very pleasant stuff. It's a very good dry nutty flavor, some light froth on top, and deep color. You need to drink three beers, so we're on the <laughs> second one. <laughs> Ford mentions that the world is going to end in about 12 minutes. What, like in passing? Just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, by the way, the world is going to end in 12 minutes, so, you know, keep drinking. Yeah, well, let's just Might have a well. sandwich and a couple beers. <laughs> Drink beer. Yeah, the sandwich is not too important for the whole game, but it's it's something you need to do. There is a distant crass, which Ford explains is nothing to worry about, probably just your house being knocked down. I thought the dude was lying in front of it. So you want to exit back to the house, right? So exit pub. Which should be east, actually. County Lane, you see the huge bulldozer heaving itself among the cloud of brick dust, which is all that remains of your home. As you start up the lane, a small dog runs up to you, yapping. Ford hurries after you. Give the sandwich to the dog. Give sandwich to dog. The dog is deeply moved. <laughs> With powerful sweeps of its tail, it indicates that it regards this cheese sandwich as one of the great cheese sandwiches. Nine out of ten pet owners could happen by at this point expressing any preference they pleased, but this dog would spurn both them and all their tins. This is a dog which has met its main sandwich. It eats with passion and ignores a passing microscopic space fleet. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> all you needed to do. <laughs> so, go up to the house. <laughs> go to house. So it's north. Go yeah. north. You reach the site of what was your home and is now a pile of rubble. Mr. Process Prosser looks sheepishly triumphant. A trick few people can do, as it requires a lot of technically complex deltoid muscle work. <laughs> okay, now that normally you just wait here, right, until Ford drops something, but you can kill Processor. Prosser. Oh, really? I feel like we should. <laughs> why not? Exactly, why not? So, kill Prosser. Prosser, is it what? Is it? It's an ER. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Kill Prosser. You muck up all his fancy facial work. This is the last moment of satisfaction he will experience for some time. Oh, so it was that easy? <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. It wasn't much of a guy. Okay, oh, so should we just take his watch? So you just wait. Let me see. He was wearing a digital watch. Yeah, but he's got this thing about digital watches in the books, and you don't really want a digital watch. Oh, okay. Oh, with her, he dropped something, right? The noise like a cross between a Led Zeppelin's farewell concert and the eruption of Krakatoa. Okay, a huge fleet of Vogan constructor ships flies overhead and announces that Earth will be demolished to make way for a new hyperspace bypass in two of your Earth minutes. Thank you for the warning. And Get your affairs in order. You have two minutes. There you go. <laughs> you drop the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, and it rolls away. It is the least of your worries. Anyway, you've been trying to get rid of it for years. Don't worry about it. You'll get it again. It's one of those things that it'll always be in your inventory. Oh, <laughs> One of those. It's 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 an in joke in the whole thing. It has nothing to do with the book. It has nothing. It's something completely unique to this game. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, just wait here. Wait again. Yeah, because we're waiting for a particular thing. There's oh. a, quite a bit of time. You're going to end up waiting for some of this stuff. The vast yellow ships thunder across the sky, spreading waves of terror and panic in their wake. So you want to? Yeah. Go ahead. 
The voice of the Vogan captain slams across the country, insisting that the planning charts and demolition orders have been available at the local planning office in Alpha Centauri for 50 years. And <laughs> it's too late to start making a fuss about it now. And Ford drops the black device from his satchel. So you want to get device. Get device. Taken. Fierce gales whip across the land and thunder bangs continuously through the air in the wake of the giant ships. Ford. Now, some of the things that you do in this game, you only have so many opportunities to do it or it fails. Oh. So we're going to shortcut and actually say press the green button. Normally you would examine it and it would tell you that the green button the green button's flickering and you press oh, the green button. Press so. green I'm all for shortcuts. button. Lights whirl sickeningly around your head, the ground arches away beneath your feet, and every atom of your being is scrambled, an experience you're probably going to have to get used to. You are in dark. Turn on light. Um Actually, you have to wait a bit. Oh, we have to wait to be reassembled? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing right. you can taste, nothing you can see, nothing you can hear, nothing you can feel, nothing you can smell. You do not even know who you are. And let's wait some more. Yeah, if, if we're Ooh. not even conscious, you know. <laughs> There's no... Yeah, wait. basically you wait four times and... Uh, or... Ford turns on the light. <laughs> Wait more. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, smell. Oh, yes. We can now. It doesn't say that we smell nothing. Yeah. It does smell a bit. There's something pungent being waved under your nose. Your head begins to clear. You make out a shadow moving in the dark. You see how subtle that was? Is it one thing different between when you waited and you didn't? Uh huh. Mm. It's this. That's the way this game is. It's the subtleties that'll get you. So. Um, is it smelling salts? Look at the shadow. Look at shadow. The shadow is vaguely Ford perfect shaped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vogan hold. This is a. Squalid room filled with grubby mattresses, unwashed cups, and unidentifiable bits of smelly alien underwear. Okay. A door lies to port, and an airlock lies to starboard. In the corner is a glass case with a switch and a keyboard. It looks like the glass case contains an atomic vector plotter. Oh, I have one of those. Along one wall is a tall dispensing machine. Ford removes the bottle of Sanitragerian mineral water which <laughs> and waving well, under your nose. Never had it. <laughs> I heard it tastes like lemonade. <laughs> he tells you that you were aboard a Vogan spaceship and gives you some peanuts. Well, that was nice of him. So you eat the peanuts. Which you had read the book or saw the show. Yes, you eat the peanuts. Peanut. <laughs> you feel stronger as the peanuts, peanuts replace some of the protein you lost in the matter transference beam. Which is one of the reasons why you drank all the beer, because if you didn't drink the beer, you'd be in worse shape. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, can you can you be tra transferred without drinking the beer? Not really. You kind of stuck at the pub until you drink enough beer. Ah. Uh, mm. Honestly, you could get you could get reassembled and you'd be all all bent out of shape, and you'd have to go through the rest of the game all handicapped or something. Yeah. So. Uh, so I think what you need to do next is get some water. Get Even though it doesn't really say it. Water. Taken. So you drink the water. Drink the water. And, or, I'm going to say water. No, yeah. uh, 
don't think you drink it yet. No. Now what else is it? Um, do, 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 tells you. Um, talk to Ford. Yeah, talk to Ford. Talk to Ford. Hmm. Ford Perfect looks at you expectingly, as if you seem to be about to talk. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta say something to Ford. Oh. Um. Hello, Ford. <laughs> Hello to you too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's look at our little cheat sheet here. <laughs> nice weather, isn't ah, it? Ah, I see what it says to do, but I don't know why it would I don't tell know you that. the word weather. Well, fooey on you. So anyway, we should get the towel. Oh, now we get the towel. I didn't know we still we get had the it. Towel. Get the towel. Take it. <laughs> okay. So we want to look around the room. Look, why don't we look at the, the, uh, the look at the room again? Look at room. Because this is the Babelfish room. Uh huh. So we've got the glass case. We've got a keyboard and a switch. We've got the two exits that we're not going to worry about, and we have a tall dispensing machine. So why don't we look at the tall dispensing machine? This is the most annoying puzzle I think I've ever seen in a game. <laughs> Ford says, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but you'll never be able to finish the game without consulting this g the guide about lots of stuff. So you're supposed to actually have the physical Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He, no, he's giving you the guide, so you would type in... Um, uh, what is it that you type in? You type in guide and then the uh, um, guide and then what you need to do. So if you wanted to say you Sagittarian, for example, you would say guide and then the name of what you wanted to search in the guide. Mm. Uh, so if you wanted the information on the Vogons, you would say go guide Vogon. Mm. There was no verb in that sentence. <laughs> Consult guide. <laughs> Consult <coughs> guide. Vogon. The guide checks through its sub ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry uh, Vogons whose specialties are bureaucracy and planet smashing because those two are um, closely related are the most unpleasant race in the galaxy they wouldn't think twice about throwing someone into space and wouldn't lift a finger to save their own grandmother from the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll also see the entries on Vogon Poetry and the Ravenous Bug Bladder Beast of Troll. Now, that Ravenous Bug Bladder Beast of Troll is very important later, and you really need to read the guide on it in order to figure out how to con defeat it. Mm. So that's where the guide comes in to actually... Of course, if you've read the book and done all the shows, you know what it is anyways, but... <laughs> <laughs> when you're playing this game, you need to, the guide gives you all the, as it does in the game in the books, it gives you all the background information on everything. Okay, so now. In this case, we don't really need it at this point. Yeah, so what are we supposed to do in the hole? So we, well, the first thing we need to do is to look at this dispenser. And I'll explain what we need to do after that. Dispenser. The dispenser is tall, has a button at around eye level, and says Babel Fish in large letters. Anything dispensed would probably come out of the slot at around knee level. It bears a small label which reads, Another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. <clears throat> so, push the button. Push button. 
Which button do you mean? The dispenser button, the red button, or the green button? <laughs> oh, the dispenser button. <laughs> push dispenser button. A single babel fish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room and through a small hole in the wall just under a metal hook. Not helping us, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what, what we're supposed so to do. So what do we need to do to hang on something? Now, if we only had something that we had to hang on the hook to block the small hole. Oh, right. We have a towel. Hang towel on hook. It slips off the hook. Of course okay, what else we got? Uh, our gown. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're just gonna strip naked here, and well, you're wearing yeah, your jeans. You have to take it off first. Yeah. Oh yes, I. See. <laughs> okay. Well, you could say it. Hang down on hook. Hang down on hook. <laughs> You'll have to remove it first. <laughs> remove. Tom is catching on. I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Painstakingly descriptive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now you know what you know. All the guys who wrote uh, write stereo instructions, they play these games. <laughs> uh, yes, and you, I you, tell you, if they can't make it through one of these games, you shouldn't hire them to write stereo instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should you should <laughs> join us for our next. Um, if we're going to do a space quest uh, long play or something. You should, you should be on one of those. That was painful. Yeah, the parser is even worse than this. There's mm -hmm. a lot of I cannot understand this. Oops. And that was even a graphical. Hang o gown. It's it's an Ain't Irish gown. <laughs> Hang o gown. Hang gown on hook. Okay. Gown is now hanging from the hook, covering a tiny hole. You're so, going to love this, because you're going to go back and push the dispenser button again. So just push dispenser button push again. Push dispenser button. Meanwhile, you're naked. <laughs> A single babel fish shoots out of the slot. It sails across the room, hits the dressing gown. The fish slides down the sleeve of the gown and falls to the floor, vanishing through the grating of... A hitherto unnoticed drain. Oh. <laughs> of course we didn't notice the drain. So Cover it with the towel. Uh, you can try that, but it's not going to work. <laughs> uh, so you need to get something to block up um, the drain, and the only thing that is going to be around is Ford Perfect satchel. Oh, we can take a satchel. Yeah, take satchel. Taken. So you put the satchel on the drain. Put satchel on. Drain. We're saving a lot of steps in examining and looking <laughs> and talking. And <laughs> the drain is too large to be covered by the satchel. Oh no, put the towel on the drain. Sorry. Put towel on drain. Yeah, the satchel goes over the next thing. That's easy for you to say since you don't even have the towel. I took the towel. Oh, remember, but you dropped it. You, but you dropped you it. You put it so on the hook. When you dropped it on the hook, and oh. mind you, the, the satchel, you don't have it either. It's on the drain. So, oh, okay. So it's take. Take <laughs> satchel. Take gown. You already take have towel. it. An announcement is coming over the ship's intercom. Okay, this is the part that you need the babel fish for, so we need to... Yeah, look, so take, oh. take towel. Take towel. Put towel on drain. An announcement, blah, blah, blah. Put towel on drain. Okay. Towel completely covers the drain. Press the button again. Press dispenser button. Okay, cover the panel with the satchel. So wait, wait, it comes... Slides down, the slides floor. down the floor, landing on the towel. A split second later, a tiny clean robot rolls across the floor, grabs a fish, and goes through the panel. <laughs> of course. So, 
cover panel with satchel. Okay. Yeah, put patch uh, satchel over panel. Put satchel over panel. Now, do you want to skip the next step, or do you want to kind of keep shortcutting? Oh, we'll uh, we'll 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 we won't shortcut yet. Okay, push the push the button. Push <laughs> dispenser button. This is the part that took me days. <laughs> uh, okay, so falls to the floor, land on the towel, split like in later tiny cleaning robot. I thought we already covered the panel. Yep, yep. He, but it plows into the satchel, sending the babel fish through the air in a graceful oh, arc. Oh, the tiny robot. As base of the robot plows into the satchel, sending the babel fish flying through the air in a graceful arc. A small upper half of the room cleaning robot flies into the room, catches the babel fish, which is all the flying junk it can find, and exits. <laughs> it's been waiting. It's been waiting years for something to okay. fly up in the air so for it to catch. So put the mail on the satchel. <laughs> oh, I uh, put the mail. Get the flying junk it can find. <laughs> Okay, put mail oh, wow. on <laughs> satchel. I forgot to take the mail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Then you're screwed. <laughs> you know how many days I spent to press the button again? <laughs> oh, push this Spencer button. Okay, the tiny cleaning robot whizzes across the floor. The robot plows into the satchel, sending the babel fish flying through the air in a graceful arc, surrounded by a cloud of junk mail. Another robot flies in and begins madly collecting the cluttered plume of mail. The babel fish continues its flight, landing with a th loud squish in your ear. Okay, now How if anybody has not uh, seen the babel, uh, what a babel fish is, is this was Douglas Adams' way of having everybody speak English. Ah, uh, yes. It was a fish that you stuck in your ear because you wanted something very improbable. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That decoded sound waves into a matrix in your mind. You can, by the way, if you just want to type in consult guide Babelfish, <laughs> oh. it will explain to you what a Babelfish is. Mm. But uh, anyways, it allows him to hear in English what the aliens are saying. Short version. So, as you can see, the uh, captain is sending out a note that we picked up a couple of hitchhikers, and of course, Vogons don't like hitchhikers. And they'll throw us into space after reading us some poetry. May, uh, if we're unlucky. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because you can do a consult guide on Vogon poetry. So. He's not a nice fellow. <laughs> And by the way, you want to do a get all because you want to get all your stuff. Oh, okay. Satchel taken, towel taken, your aunt gave, the thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is, taken. Your gown holding too much already. Keyboard, you can't be serious. Can I put on gown? Yeah. Put on gown. You're not holding your gown. Take gown. Taken. Put on gown. You are now wearing your gown. Guards burst in and grab you and Ford. Who comes slowly awake? They drag you down the corridor to a large cabin where they strap you into large menacing chairs. Captain's quarters in the poetry appreciation chair. This is a, the chair of the Vogon captain. You and Ford are strapped into poetry appreciation chairs. <laughs> Captain is indescribably hideous, indescribably blubbery, and indescribably mid to dark green. Well, for <laughs> indescribably, why is he describing him? <laughs> that's the joke. That's the joke of it, and that's the hum whole humor that that story is based upon. So whether you get it or you don't, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying the humor. I must say, it, it, it's a very sarcastic, Bri very British humor, is it not? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's very um, sort of Monty Python-y, she spacey. It kind of, in a vague way, reminds me of the humongous entertainment games, especially Spy Fox. This was the guy who wrote the book on it. 
right? Like before he wrote this book, science fiction was serious, mm-hmm. right? You had fantasy, you had nobody wrote comedy books. I mean, Terry Pratchett wasn't, you know. No, those aren't yeah. exactly funny. Well, there's there's some parody to them, you know, a certain amount of humor, I guess. But uh, his stuff is his stuff has a bit of parody satire, particularly about things about pocket, wa- you know, digital watches, <laughs> um, marketing people. Like if you do the uh, consult the guide on the serious cybernetics corporation, oh. <laughs> they'll talk about the first thing that uh, something should do is be the they should be the first guys against the wall when the revolution comes. <laughs> And then there's a couple of entries later that where they are the first thing that gets the wall when the revolution came. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, the, the guide is a very weird device. Anyways, um, so we basically want to enjoy this poetry. Oh, boy, enjoy poetry. Enjoy poetry. Enjoy poetry. The Vulcan captain hasn't begun yet. <laughs> uh so do we wait? So I guess we wait. Wait. Time passes. He's going to read us his poetry, mutters forward, swearing profusely. Just pray he softens it us up with some cudgels first. Yeah, let's hope he beats us. <laughs> so wait a bit more, because he hasn't started it. Wait. <laughs> now he oh, started. <laughs> Fred Lid grunt bugly. Thy nacturations are to me. Enjoy poetry. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that although the Vogan poetry is a, indeed astoundingly bad, worse things happen at sea and, in fact, at school. <laughs> With an effort for which Hercules himself would have patted you on the back, you grit your teeth and enjoy the stuff. As plurd. plurdled. <laughs> Gabled block shit, block kit on a lugrid B. Now, a note about this is that if you consult the guide on Vogon poetry, it'll talk about the wor- it'll be the third worst poetry in the world, or second worst, and that it gives a description of someone on the former planet Earth as having the worst poetry. <laughs> in the original radio series, they actually, actually, he actually used a real person, <laughs> and subsequently, in the book and the other series, that has been edited to something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh. So basically, we want to. Um, Or should we look at their... At okay, that, just wait until he's finished. Or I said we could look at our BBC visual edition of Hitchhiker's. Yeah, we can, we can look at that, because that is the big puzzle for the first big puzzle. The next one is trying to get the freaking door open once you get onto the Heart of Gold ship, because you're going to get tossed out of this ship, and you end up being picked up by the Heart of Gold. Uh, very similar to what people expect in the movies. <laughs> Um, the thing you don't expect is the fact that you have to convince the door because it's sa- uh, sentient, right? Oh, of course. To allow it to open, you know, that it should open up for you. <laughs> <laughs> then you actually play as Beeblebrox, you play as Trillian, a- and yourself again. I'm not sure, I can't remember if you play as Ford or not. But anyways, you're, you're trying to, f- to get four different types of pocket fluff. Or types of fluff. <laughs> Which is not in any of the things, any of the media, only this game. And there's like some really weird puzzles ahead. Just trying to get the infinite infinite improbability drive to work because you need to make tea. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it follows the plot somewhat. If you've read the book, you'll have a better understanding of it. Like the bug bladder beast, you have to put towel over your head. Because if it if you can't see it, it assumes that you can't it can't see you. Okay. Because <laughs> it's so dumb, <laughs> right? The, the, it's so dumb, and then this is what the guide tells you. The guide tells you it's so well. To type it. Consult guide. Consult guide. 
uh, and, uh, except you have to say bug bladder beast. Bug. No, no. Consult guide bug bladder beast. Consult guide bug. How do you spell that? Two T's. Uh, unless I spelled it wrong. Consult guide bug ladder beast. Oh, it's thinking. There we go. Mind, -boggl mind bogglingly stupid animal. It has almost <laughs> no capacity for learning from experience and is therefore surprised by virtually everything that happens to it. Here's an example of how stupid it is. It thinks that if you can't see it, it can't see you. Its behavior would be quite endearing if it wasn't spoiled by this one thing. It is the most violently carnivorous, carnivorous creature in the galaxy. Avoid, avoid, avoid. And then the rest is more Kvogon poetry. More poetry. <laughs> so let's take a look at the uh, visual version. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so this is our the BBC visual edition of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which says clearly not to panic and please press this giant red button, which will probably destroy the world. Ooh, very nice visual interface. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Why does it say I beg your pardon? It kind of saves where you left off. So you were in the dark before, so it just didn't take your thing. So you just say... Turn on light. Oh, nice. Oh. So get out of bed. Oops. Get Typo. out <laughs> of bed. Get all. Oh, that's right. I have to get gown. The gown. You already yeah. have it. Oh. Wear the gown. Wear gown. Check the pockets. In. <laughs> pocket so oh. you can see on the side now you get your inventory oh and I can even click on it there was no verb oh okay so I have to type take that oh, that's kind of cool and you can see they have uh, you know where the go thing is there you, that's how you do your direction so if you want to oh, go yeah. north south so now you can also do the north south up there it's a, a little bit more of an interface yeah. It's all done in Flash, mind you. There's a Java based one I've seen somewhere too as well, but this Flash one just works. <laughs> no T. <pretty good>. <laughs> yeah. It, that that really is the whole game, by the way, is to get a cup of tea. A good tea. <laughs> oh wow. Get mail. Go south. Oh. Lie down. Wait. 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 Ask for about about house. Now this this will be a slightly easier way to play the game. You at least have some visual representation of what you're doing. Yeah. You notice there's even a guide button on the side. Oh, yes. Yeah. Consult guide about, and then you type in whatever you want. Yeah. So it's a, a little easier. And if you notice, the compass orientation actually changes to match the picture. So you see how it's slightly askew now? Oh. So it tells you that south is down towards the end of the thing. It really not going to matter too much, but it's it's kind of cool. Um. Yeah. There's, I mean, keep in mind that we're leaving out a lot of stuff here. You know, like <laughs> you should really look under your bed. Um, oh. <laughs> you know, there's there's one, one of all those kinds games. of little witty stuff that he's written in. 
that just little Easter eggs everywhere. Yeah, it's I wouldn't even call them Easter eggs. They're just the way he wrote it in. <laughs> it's how the book's written. It's how he he put it in. We're we're obviously skipping a lot of steps, but there's a lot of game left, and we're not even touching the scratching the surface on the game. Yeah, maybe eventually we'll do a long play or something. When I actually figure out how to save on... Well, that's the important thing about this game, is I think this particular version, the Flash version, actually kind of like auto-saves for you. Oh, that see, that would be very nice. Now, there's a second version, like a Play Edition 2, which even has better graphics, apparently. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Looks it's insane. impressive, though, to have that, that much gameplay attached to something made in 84. Yeah. Now, he did another game, too, that was unrelated to anything he'd written. It was called um, Starship Titanic. Being that it's the, now the 14th of April and the, the uh, Titanic uh, anniversary of the 100 years of its sinking. Oh, uh, yeah. It would have been a good one to do as well. It basically is the same idea as you have this big giant starship and you have to run around and try to keep it from crashing or blowing up or <laughs> self-destructing or something. That reminds me of a Doctor Who episode. Yeah. Um, that one actually looked like the Titanic. This one just looked like a big giant spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. And it was written in the same... Um, Humor style? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, this might be worth a read on the book, though. Yeah. Uh, the, the, in playing the game here. Well, the trilogy, which is five books. <laughs> that's some trilogy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not what a trilogy is, though. <laughs> well, it, you have to realize that originally it was, wasn't kind of written as a trilogy. He wrote it more like two books, which was... Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is the first one. And then Restaurant at the End of the Universe. And then they did um, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. Then they came out with a... At least I'm kind of hoping to make sure I get that one right. Um, it was, what was it there? Yeah. Oh, no. Life, the Universe, and Everything was the third one. Duh. Which is actually the first book I read because the way our library service around here was is this book was always out. And I ended up getting, when I put a request for the three books, I got them in reverse order. So I had to read them in reverse order. Yeah. You know, something really didn't matter. <laughs> but it's, this is the book I have the most copies of because I have it in paperback and single books. I have it as hardcovers and single books. I have it as trilogies i have it as four books in the set i have five books in the set because he wrote a fifth one later but so you know you have life the universe everything so long thanks for all the fish mostly harmless and there's supposed to be another short one but i i really consider the um, mostly harmless to be the last of the books and of course it's a radio series that was on the bbc that's what it was originally written as and then it turned into a tv series which pretty does most of up to sec in the second book. And um, when he wrote the books, he actually kind of took the basic story and kind of built more into it. So the book was... See, that that usually doesn't happen, the book being written after the yeah. media. Usually you write a book and then you turn it into a... TV show or a radio drama or a game or whatever. Yeah, it was done as a radio drama. Um, they used the um, so a journey, an Eagles tune called "The Journey of the Sorcerer," um, which is all instrumental as the theme song. Mm. It's just fantastic, and uh, they did it as an audio, and then they kind of expanded it a bit for the TV series. All right. And then the books were expanded again. And he's got a lot of extra stuff in the books. It doesn't really change the plot much, but there's a lot more stuff going on in between certain scenes and other. Um, the one, the part where the guy creates a machine to show his wife. Um, it, it's the total perspective. It's total perspective vortex. 
It's a machine that when you're put in it, shows you how much, how significant you are in the universe. <laughs> if you think of it, you know, infinite universe, billions of galaxies, how insignificant you really are, because it basically destroys people's minds, <laughs> right? It's used uh-huh. as a torture device. And the fact that they take Zephal Beelbrox and stick him in it, and he actually comes out and says, I knew the thing was made for me, and walks away because of something obviously something else going on that I won't tell you about because it's a major spoiler. <laughs> but the fact that he survives it, it was just amazing, you know, like, and then you find out why he survives it. And it makes sense. So it's a trilogy in five parts. It was a trilogy in four, three parts and then it became four parts. <laughs> and uh, they just kept calling it the Hitchhiker's Guide Trilogy. That's that's all. That was his in-joke. <laughs> Um, very very humorous book, um, but in a dry British way. Right. It does, you know. He he wrote this kind of to make fun of science fiction, hardcore science fiction, which it kind of needed to be made fun of. Yeah, and he's put in a bunch of stuff on uh, what people thought is a neat idea, you know, digital watches. All, all the all the current fads or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know the fact that aliens have a bureaucracy just as much as the local councils because there's a they, they, he's got this thing going on with the ha- local council trying to tear down Arthur Dent's uh, house here. Uh huh. You know, and the fact that they hid the plans in the bottom of, fi- of a lock filing cabinet in a disused washroom with a attack cat <laughs> and a broken stairs. <laughs> you know the same as the Fogon saying, well, it's been on display for 50 years in Alpha yeah. Centauri. If you don't have time to take care of your local <laughs> events, then we can't do anything about it. <laughs> and blow up the planet. And they blow up the planet. Mm. Right. And then uh, you, it goes on to find out, as if you've watched the movie, that, and this is a spoiler, that the planet actually was a giant computer. <laughs> And you were, you come know, up you were just a bunch and of <laughs> come up with not the answer because the answer is forty two, but the meaning of life and the universe and everything. The answer is forty two, but the question they didn't know the question. So, so they, they had to create Earth. They basically had a Tron, like they had, they had to create the grid. Well, it was so co- a computer so complex that the organic uh, entities would become part of the matrix. Is how I think he described it. <laughs> oh, so everyone was a bit. Everything was, everybody was interconnected. And there's one part, I think, in the TV series where you, he did, he describes the planet, right? In the, the narrator, which uh-huh. is the voice of the book, describes the planet. And he says, every, this one person in this coffee shop in some place in England finally realized how everything would work and that everything could be great and you know, perfect. And unfortunately, the planet was destroyed two seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the uh, the computer had just finished its uh, run when the Vogons destroy it. Oh. Yeah, it's a... I, they're very short books, read them. It's a very big book, all six of them, but each of the individual books themselves are actually fairly small. Kind of like Lord of the Rings, where it's actually umpteen different books all sort of split up, and it'd be actually. I think, uh, I think the whole five-part trilogy might equal one of the books. One of the paperbacks are only about um, oh, maybe three eighths of an inch thick. Hmm. Right, they're less than a half inch thick. Wow. Uh, as a little, you know, those little thin paperbacks you used to get from, you know, Scholastics yeah. when you were a kid, you know, like the juvenile novels, the three oh, books yeah. are that size. And the, the other two are a little bit bigger. Um, but the, the, all to total, there's not a whole lot of pages here. They're, the books are quite small. That's the way they were back then. I mean, nobody <laughs> wrote big, huge. <laughs> you know, Stephen King came around and started writing big books. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, but uh, they could have easily put all three books. I just don't think it, you know they were written. He, this yes, Douglas Adams was very notorious for um, the sound of a deadline. It, it, yeah, 
deadlines. That's the sound that uh, he likes the sounds they make when they whiz by. That's what his famous quote is, is, is about deadlines is he likes the sound they make as they whiz by <laughs> very famous for not making, making uh, deadlines and having w- really bad writer's block. Mm. He was, I think there were instances he said that they wrote, he uh, may take a year or two to write a book but the book itself would be written in a 12 hour period. <laughs> uh, yeah. It'd be the last 12 hours of those two years. <laughs> you finally get that breakthrough. Like, Oh yeah. Now, now I get it. Like two years room. thinking about it. And then all of a sudden he would sit down at the uh, typewriter and write it. Uh huh. It was unfortunate. His death at an early age. Cause I think he probably would have had uh, a lot more to write. He was writing other stuff like Dirk gently. Uh, which is sort of a holistic detective uh, book, hmm. kind of completely different. I, I really like them, um, but they're not the same as the Hitchhiker's Guide, which hey, it's good for him because he could write something different. But uh, anyways, I highly recommend anybody who's interested in this type of game because there's all kinds of them besides Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, there was uh, Leather Goddesses of Phobos, which is a little bit more adult. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. But, but not too raunchy. It's just uh, not too bad, but it uh, it's uh, not Leisure Suit Larry kind of crass. It's not crass, shall we say. <laughs> um, then there's the Zork ones. Oh, uh, uh, yes. But there's all kinds of nice text adventure games um the major thing with them is, is the parser which is the way the f- it, it, it actually, deciphering what you're saying they're the varies in capability right like some of them if you type in north it doesn't understand what it means you have to type in n <laughs> right wow. oh, yes. this one is kind of unique because you can type in north you can type in what you want to do and it would still figure out that you want to go north you say I will go into the pub enter the pub oh you're going to go west right you could type in W you could have typed in as uh, as Joshua did go north uh, go west for example uh-huh. um, so the later and this is one of the later like the late 80s or mid 80s I uh, parsers were a lot better than the uh, early ones but they're still not well then they eventually moved to the pointing mouse the point and click yeah after this is you know you get a lot more graphic based games like um, the scum based ones which, uh, manic mansion which those uh, are a lot easier except that you started having to resort to pixel hunting they always everything has their pluses and minuses and that is pixel hunting you often have to describe, um, use your eyes more and use the less, pay less attention to the text descriptions because they don't have a lot of room to describe a lot of text, right? Mm-hmm. You have to rely and, on their visual description. And if their visuals are off, then you, it's sometimes hard to figure out the puzzles. Mm-hmm. This and, one here, if you haven't noticed, is that they give you subtle clues in the text, Right. You know, only if that the the flying robot had more junk to catch. Yeah, would, I think that would be easier if it had if it wasn't quite the stark white against the stark black. You know, re- reading that Apple II screen wasn't exactly the easiest thing to do. Yeah, the fonts were a bit hard on the eyes. That's all you had. <laughs> there, there were no WYSIWYG fonts back then. <laughs> you had the built-in font. Um, and 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 honestly, sometimes the one that was uh, you know like uh, built in was better than some of the ones that they like because you could create new fonts by uh, replacing the uh, tables inside the, uh, in oh, the yeah. ROM, like copy the ROM table over into RAM and then put your new one in and then point to it. it I remember doing that because we used to create our own characters, you know, because there were some characters you uh, wanted to create a new character. Or not a sprite, but an actual text character. Mm-hmm. You could do that. It was just a matrix and program it in. But uh, I can remember doing that. But anyways, um, it's a great game. Just very aggravating. <laughs> <laughs> As if you haven't read the book. Adventure games are. 
yeah, well, they're designed, and that's if you're not into adventure games, don't do this. No, go go play a shooter or an action game or something yeah. like that. This game, I remember. I mean, I hadn't played this since probably 1985, and because uh, I think it came out, I may have played it on my old Atari ST at the time. But I can't. I can still remember trying getting the Babel fish <laughs> and fighting with the T. But, uh, you know, you don't remember not getting the Babel fish once you played this game. Well, no, that because that is some kind of puzzle. <laughs> Absolutely. And even, we took shortcuts. Yeah, you've even taken all the shortcuts. It's just like, I was supposed to know that how? <laughs> By subtly, you know, I tried to point out some of the clues that uh-huh. they gave you. There were some other things. Like, I mean, if you talked and examined and you looked around... But if you noticed, you only had so much time before the guards came in and got you, and then you didn't have the Babel fish, and then you got thrown into space and you died. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's one of those games that there may not you know, be a timer, but there's a limited number of attempts. Number. Yeah. It's a kind of a, a kind of a timer. You have a limited number of events before the path. You have to get it right. It's almost a quick time event. <laughs> yes, you you have so you can you only have so many wrong tries before you die. Yeah, it's not too bad with that that particular puzzle. I think um, there's like a whole lot of ways to die. <laughs> oh, you should have seen Space Quest. Space there Quest. were so <laughs> I was just gonna many say. ways to die. Oh my God, we think we found them all. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's go find the Sarlacc again. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, for uh, that one, I think we will. Uh, if we play it through long play, we might find a, an FAQ or two. <laughs> yes, because I, I incidentally I lost the save we had. Oh so, God! So. <laughs> it took us hours to get even as far. far. <laughs> two hours. It took us two hours to get through a portion of the game. Twenty percent of it, or something like that. Yeah. So. Or less. Wow. That, that was probably the longest. That is, that is still the longest episode we ever we've ever done. Um, this one is close, but it's still we still haven't. If, if we talk for another forty minutes, we'll be right up there with Space Quest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Space Quest was a. <sighs> that was a game. Yeah. Hey, by the well, way, we'll who expected to come to the introspection podcast this week and get some book recommendations? Huh? <laughs> Any of you out there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, well, I can recommend that you watch, if you see the TV series for this, watch it. Read the book. Or <laughs> if somehow you can find it, listen to the original BBC dramatization. Which I think I may actually have, well, I bet you courtesy find it. of Curtis. Yeah. The um, original, I actually have, as I said, I have a number of books. I actually have the scripts, the original scripts of this, because I listened to it in junior high off of a college radio station. And I think I could have got it on LP out of my local library. Because, of course, compact disc didn't exist until much later when I was in high school. All right, well, should we go out with a episode of the BBC radio drama? At least I assume that's what this is. We'll... Why not? I don't think you can... Well, we'll let this play us out. Play us off, keyboard Hitchhiker's Guide. <laughs> <laughs> the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Starring Peter Jones as the book with Simon Jones and Geoffrey McGiven. This is the story of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 
perhaps the most remarkable, certainly the most successful book ever to come out of the great publishing corporations of Ursa Minor. More popular than the celestial home care omnibus, better selling.